Chapter 1089 of the One Piece manga just dropped. If you're not caught up, feel free to keep scrolling, and I recommend that you do. So the chapter is titled Under Siege. Obviously, we are back seeing the Straw Hats again. But first, a quick check-in with what's going on around the world. You guys remember when the world government used that giant weapon to destroy Lelucia? This is what it looks like now. I don't know about you guys, but as far as I'm concerned, we now know how Eni's Lobby was created. Like, it's the exact same thing. A 360-degree waterfall that does not close in on itself. But the hole that was left behind isn't even the most wide-ranging effect. The East Blue, North Blue, West Blue, and South Blue are all experiencing earthquakes and tsunamis on a level never before seen. It's specifically stated that it's to the point where no one can even determine where it's coming from. Because it's just hitting everywhere all at once. The sea level has risen worldwide by a meter. This has caused some islands in the world to shrink as their shoreline disappeared below water and some islands to disappear entirely. So there are whole nations outside of Lelucia that were destroyed by this one attack. Now after we learn about this worldwide devastation, we zoom back in on Egghead. And the narrator states that the force approaching Egghead would put a buster call to shame. There are nine Navy HQ Vice Admirals, and a fleet of over a hundred different Navy battleships of various sizes and classes, including 20 great warships and over 30,000 Marines. And then of course, as we know on top of that, we have a member of the Gorosei and a Navy Admiral on board, all ready to attack this island. We see a conversation between Sentomaru and Kizaru, and Kizaru is basically just saying like, listen, you just need to give up, I'm a cog in the machine, I'm not stopping, I was given orders. Which shows like really just how heartless Kizaru is. And we get a glimpse at his real view of justice. Like, he does not care what the orders are. If they came from someone higher in the chain of command than him, he'll do it. We also get a glimpse at the personality of St. Jay Garcia, because he asks them where did all of the workers and employees of Egghead go? And he's told by one of the vice admirals, like, they fleed yesterday, but we do know where their ships are. And he just says, well, sink them. They might know something, so wipe them out. So I guess there goes the theories that St. J. Garcia Saturn is actually secretly a good guy. What I did find interesting is that he was informed that Jewelry Bonnie was on the island, and he said, Oh, Kuma's daughter. Well, we no longer have use for her, but since she's a little girl, leave her alone. So I really want to know what the backstory was behind that conversation. We also see another conversation going on via Den Den Mushi between the Gorose and York. York is shocked that they would attack her as well, and she's trying to make a deal with the five elders. One thing I did want to point out is that the Gorosei say that they are there on a special request. And she, understandably, asks, like, well, who could request something of you, basically? And they're just like, never mind. Are you capable of making more Mother Flames for us? And she says, yes, but in exchange, I want to be a Celestial Dragon. Now, we knew that that was her goal the entire time, but I had never for one second considered that they would actually go through with it. But they agree to her terms. And she says, awesome, you've got a deal. There's just one more thing I need you to do. And she starts crying and says, save me because Luffy wants to kill me. And we get one final shot of the Straw Hats looming over York, ready to fight. 